over? Sure. That's fine. So in the beginning of the school year, our client Alex Billings met CJ Pearson at freshman orientation. We are suing CJ Pearson for emotional distress at NKHS for negligent supervision. Sorry. At the time, their relationship was friendly and the girls were kind to one another. But about a month into the school year, things changed. For the worst in Billings case, Pearson began to relentlessly torment Billings to the point where she developed PTSD diagnosed by Gabriella Rodriguez. Pearson began making fun of Billings at a club that Pearson invited Billings to. The torment continued in school later and others joined in, including Billings' English teacher, who not only the bully, but she laughed along. Later, after Billings had missed so much school, she was called into the counselor's office where she t then told them what had been happening. The counselor talked to the principal about the situation, but the principal failed to act on his part, as he should have in violation of the bullying policy he helped write. After Billings' mother approached the school about it, the failed to act on their part. Billings' mother left rightfully upset, forcing her to send her daughter to another school to give her a better and safer learning environment that KHS could not provide. Does that conclude your opening statement? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. The defense would like to proceed with their opening statement. We would like for the court to find the school not guilty of negligent supervision. We believe that our witnesses will provide enough evidence to show the actions were off school grounds, there were preventative measures taken, and the actions were not bullying under school policy. Therefore, the school should not be liable. We would also like for the court to find that the defendant's actions were not extreme or outrageous. It is our belief that the witnesses will testify that Pearson's actions were non-discriminatory, the temporary restraining order was sufficient, and the plaintiff could have prevented any escalation. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, uh, does the plaintiff have any witnesses they would like to call? Gabriel Rodriguez. Gabriel Rodriguez, if you would take the stand, please. Okay. Here. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. All right. You may proceed. Sure. Thanks. Yep. Um, so what is your role at St. Joseph's? I am a school psychologist and I really love my job. And I'm also part of the recruiting committee because I just get to spend the week with you. Uh, what qual qualifies you as a school psychologist? Um, I have a PhD in school ty psychology from the University of Santa Fe. And there I wrote a thesis on how juveniles exhibit PTSD, so I have a lot of knowledge in that. And I'm head of recruitment at CJGA as a uh, And yeah, I think I have her qualified as an expert in psychology. Uh, do you have any objections to that? Then she would be, uh, let's consider her a qualified uh, expert in psychology. How did you meet Alex and when? Okay, so on December 2nd, 2010, when the Billings family dropped by our school student information about knowing at SJA, and I immediately sensed like very upsetness, and it was kind of like Alex had been crying, and they told me what happened at KHS. So what happened at KHS? Um, they told me, it said, Mrs. Billings believed that KHS administration was incompetent and unable to keep Alex from meeting her assets, That's what she told me. And so it was impossible for Alex to receive an adequate education there. That was her strong belief. And she really had felt forced to find an alternative school. So I'm happy that she came to us. And she was particularly upset that the school, as counselor and as principal, had nothing, done nothing to stop the bullying. And I personally read their policy, and I feel it doesn't really go far. And the KHS policy. So, Your Honor, I wish to have this document marked for identification as Exhibit E. Does the defense have any objections to the anti-bullying policy from King High School being labeled as Exhibit D? No. Then it will be so labeled and entered into evidence Exhibit D, the anti-bullying policy from King High School. Uh, 
Uh, do you recognize this item? Yes, I hope you did. Uh, would you please describe it? Um, it is a policy that doesn't really go far enough. And why do you feel that? Okay, so I feel that it should go deeper and go, it should cut a goal line that goes outside of the school grounds and school events like our policy does. And if bullying affects a student's life at school in any way, that conduct should be banned by the school because if they really care about their students and really want their, them to thrive at their school, they should, you know, do the best to prevent bullying. And cyberbullying is a huge problem in today's world. And especially with psychology, I see that a lot about how if you don't teach it and you don't recognize it, how it happens and how you need to both recognize people who are being bullied, but also the people who are bullying the people because that's something, there's something going on there and school should even think about that. And you felt that due to this um, policy doesn't go far enough was a direct cause of what you diagnosed him with, which was? Yes, I, um, concluded that Alice was left with lasting emotional trauma from the bullying she experienced. And in fact, I diagnosed Alice, Alex with post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD, using a PTSD diagnosis. And this is a PTSD test? Yes, that would be. Uh, Your Honor, I wish to have this document marked for identification as Exhibit G. Uh, defense, do you have any objections to the PTSD diagnostic test being labeled as Exhibit G in evidence? Okay, it will be uh, labeled as Exhibit G, um, and the PTSD diagnostic test is on page 46, jury, uh, and it will be considered evidence for this case. Do you recognize this item? Can you please describe it? So this is the test I used to diagnose Alex, and there's multiple places where you can see, um, would you like me to I'm talking to so there's six criteria in a PTSD diagnostic test. And the first one is, has a person experienced a traumatic event where both of them are occurred? The person experienced an event where there was a threat of or an actual death or serious injury. So can we enter Facebook account? Or, well, Alex has shown me that on. So it was part of the MyFace posting. Yes, he took yeah. the MyFace posting. Your Honor, I wish to have this document marked for identification as it did it be. Does the defense have any objections? We will enter Exhibit B into evidence uh, for the jury that is page 40, uh, the My Face Post uh, labeled I Hate Alex Billings. Uh, do you recognize this item? Yes, and this is the first criteria, and it's probably just so sad for the poor deer because he has a MyFace account titled I Hate Alex Billings. And who would want to go to school where all these people are on part? And there's, at the end it starts getting, at first it gets bullying, not really nice, really like just mean. But then at the end it starts coming where, stop coming to school Billings, no one wants you here, and I'm going to trip you in the hallway. That's technically threatening, but then at the end, you got CJ Pearson who goes, this is for you, and she posts a picture of a gun, which is really unnecessary, and just. And you feel that this was a leading cause in having yes. post traumatic stress disorder, and, so and that the bullying should, the bullying, their bullying policy should cover this. Yes, if, if a student is threatening another with a gun, there's a problem with that, and so that is the first of the six criteria of my um, test and he met that. And then the second is he must somehow relive that traumatic experience, which we found that he had recurrent nightmares, which is common in people with PTSD. And then they also must experience avoidance symptoms, which skipping school, which skipping school is what, yeah, not going to school. And obviously this is not his character because now he goes to our school and he receives all A's and he hasn't missed a day yet. So that's kind of telling me something. Although you are a certified expert, I know a lot of the jury and the opposing counsel believes that part of the post-traumatic stress disorder 
was the addiction to video games, keep them up late at night. Do you have an explanation for that? Yes, and actually this is huge because there's a lot of, it makes sense for him to, while he was going to school, to be playing video games because video games also show um, in psychology, it's really interesting because, especially in like, kind of way to escape. This is a lot, this is a lot of like <laughs> really interesting things that have been happening since 2004. And video games have been. Defense? Uh, we believe that is uh, speculation. She's an expert in her field, so she has the right to denounce the video game sexual, psychological aspect. You know, what part did you say was speculation? So the objection is for speculation, and your argument is that yeah, what part of what she said was speculation? Well, just that she assumed that like, what they were using for evidence about the video game was the future. Okay. What I'm... Um, I'm pretty sure... Well... Just okay. that... So here, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Rephrase the question. So I'm going to say sustain the objection disregard the part about about your question asking or saying what you are assuming they are going to argue okay rephrase the question and then let her answer it so how about are you positive that these symptoms are primarily caused by piercing harassment and pay just as negligence and not any other outside force yes and an outside force of things that might say yes that might be used in the new things Sure. You're not saying you're not you're not making a, a, a statement there of what this their case is supposed no. to be. You're making this a psychological support, this, statement. Yeah, this supports my um, idea that he has PTSD. You may you may proceed. And so it's really interesting because video games are common among it's really good actually they're starting to use that as a therapy for people with PTSD. So it makes sense that Alex was playing video games while he was in school because video games have that sense of like you have, you're in control of the situation, and it's letting you um, just kind of like put that all your emotions and where he obviously has no control of all the stuff that's being posted about him and said about him, and he he's really feeling a lot of helplessness because no one's like there. But through his video games, he can like um, it's called exposure therapy, and it's a treatment where a patient confronts a fear thought image or memory associated with his treatment. So it's let he being bullied and that's not something he can control. And so that's it makes sense that video games he's been playing video games. So actually I'm really happy for him that he's found that um, source. But it shouldn't be to the point where he's been skipping school. And just to backtrack for a second, I would like to make sure that everyone knows that you talked to Alex and um, her parent not as a recruitment officer, and not as a religious figure, but as a school counselor. Oh yes, that's my job. Um, that's why I'm in psychology, psychology, school psychologist, that's their main job, um, to make a good environment for the school and make sure like things about the family and make sure the students are happy. And I that might be why um, our school is so amazing because I that's my job to make sure everyone's happy. And, so and yes. your bullying policy. Um, since you say Alex is doing so well at St. Joseph's now, good grades, good attendance, would you say this is because of your non-negligence of the bullying policy that goes outside of campus? Yes, I think um, we do cover cyberbullying, and so, um, yes, I think our bullying policy is great, and I helped make it, and so saying that I don't agree with theirs is... I'm happy that Alex is doing And he's happy there now. I mean, is his post ranch is already getting treated? Yes, um, I told him to, oh, so I'll be checking on him, her, for progress on a weekly basis. And she'll participate in a counseling program which will assist her in recovering from the PTSD. Because it's really, it, it really, hinders you from excelling as a student and that's what schools are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be helping them in their journey in education. And so 
we're gonna give them, we're gonna give Alex the support she needs to move past this perfect experience and excel as high school students. Which sounds like a basic responsibility at the school. No further questions. Thank you. Uh, does the defense have any questions for this witness? Yes. You may proceed. Can I adjust this? Yes. St. Joseph's Academy. Um, it's a school where Alex is attending it. Is St. Joseph's Academy a public school? No, it's private. Who was uh, St. Joseph's Academy founded by? Um, it was founded by reverends who want to enrich teenagers' lives, providing them with um, education that encompasses the morals and values of the Christian faith. But that's kind of lessened in the 1990s today. So St. Joseph's Academy is a Christian school? Yes. Does your school receive public funding? I have no idea. I'm supposed to be college. <laughs> Why does your school not receive public funding? Because we're a private school. <laughs> okay. So how does your school fund itself? Um, by student tuition and donations. And how do you get tuition money from families that are in need? Oh, we help them. And how do you help them? Um, limited financial assistance. Because we want I mean, as many students to come as possible. So if we didn't offer that financial assistance, then we I'd have to say no to people, and that's really sad. So we want to make sure like as many people can come to our school. Are there any other ways that you help students get the tuition money? Tuition money. We work with families to come up with the required tuition. And what means do you use for that? Could you rephrase the question? Uh, how do you come up with how do you come up with the money? We talk with families and see if there's any way for them to reach the money. So like for example, do you want to give an example? I'd love to. So example, for maybe a student is excelling in writing or something and there's a huge scholar we could um, put scholarships so that they can receive that money help them reach the desire you could call it creative if you like you said you were on the school's recruitment committee mm -hmm. i love being involved at my school do you have any position on the recruitment committee Ooh, i was recently promoted to the head which is super fun I get to, um, that's why I got to meet Alex Billings, which is, it was a super good coincidence because since I was head, I got to meet him. I was, but then once I met him, I got to use my psychology side. I actually didn't even end up talking to him as head of recruitment for me. I ended up talking to him in a psychological way. <laughs> so that was super cool. So I was willing to help him. She is the head of the recruitment committee, so you did talk to him as the head of the recruitment committee, right? Because from another packet, from another person's... Objection uh, leading the witness? No, I'm not leading the witness. I'm oh, trying hold to... Hold on, hold on, hold um, on. So, to, to a certain extent, he can lead the... I think what you want to this get to... Yeah, but he so he can lead the witness. <laughs> what he can't do is he can't enter, he can't enter facts into evidence. Yeah. So you need to, that, that's oh where, that, yep, so that's where you need to. Well, I'm just that. saying is that she says that she didn't act as the head of the recruitment committee. Then have her, then have her read that from her witness statement. Okay, but I'm saying from another witness statement that she did <gasps> act as the head of the recruitment Is that like, what do you call it? Lying, impeachment. It? It's called impeachment. Oh. Um, so, so someone else's witness statement says, that she did, 
but she's saying that uh, she said that she didn't, but that she's saying that she did. Is that your question? Yeah. Then you have to get that out of that witness when they come up. You can't address that now. Okay, but I'm saying is that she's contradicting. It. She's contradicting the other witness's statement. She never said she wasn't head of recruitment. She said she talked to Alex as she a said school she, psychologist. She said she didn't talk to him as the head of recruitment. Because she didn't. She talked to him as a school. She talked to her as a school psychologist. Wait, 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 wait. hold, hold on. <laughs> Not your place to talk about this right here. Oh. Okay. So, listen. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, depending on what she said, depending on what she says, um, there there's a difference between. I mean, she has two different roles at the school, right? So you can question her about those the differences in those roles. But that, that doesn't mean necessarily, so like, yeah, I'm a teacher at the school, but I'm also a coach, right? So in one role, I'm acting as a coach. A different role, I'm acting as a teacher. Now I'm acting as a judge. Um, <laughs> but, but, but in those different roles, I may, I may approach a student in different ways, right? I may make somebody run for not doing something in basketball, but I'm probably not going to make them run in my role as a teacher, right? Does that make sense? So, so you need to question her about the differences between her roles and the way that she approached the student, if you would like to. Okay, what I was trying to say is that she said that she, when she met uh, Alex, that she wasn't acting as the counselor, and I'm saying I that, said that. Yeah, you said that. Whatever. Yeah. So she said that right here, right now, is yes, what you're saying. She said that okay. she uh, was acting as the counselor and not as the head of the recruitment. So, and, and what in her witness statement says, have her, have her read her witness statement I, then, I'm not to, to correct it. Well, I'm trying not to, okay. Objection, no foundation? Oh wait, I'm not, yeah. Sit down. No, 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 wait, it's no foundation. <laughs> it's used before certain evidence is brought to the trial for those persons that What? It's what time is fact, it? though, I guess. and it's in the witness statement. Read. I'm trying to give this it says they were directed to me by of my role on the recruitment committee. Okay. Yes, I said that. And I said it was so cool that that happened because then I was able to. Otherwise, I would never even like. I might not have even known Alex from our school. Okay. So so what he's so so where I feel like there's confusion is, did you approach him as head of the recruitment committee or as a counselor? Which way was it? Well, I wouldn't know. You, you well, said it says. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. Wait, I have to go okay. back my memory. So what page? Say. What page is that on? Uh, page twenty is the second page of hers, okay. and it's the first paragraph. Okay. Could you read that first paragraph for us? Oh yes. Oh. Um, I oh. saw Billings for the first time on December second, two thousand ten, in the Billings Draft by our school, seeking information about rolling at SJA. They were directed to me because of my role on the recruitment committee, but I ended up speaking to both of them as a school psychologist, like I've been saying. Okay. Does this coincide with what you felt like she said before? I'm a busy person. Uh, it doesn't coincide with what she said, but this makes a lot more sense now. Okay. okay. You may continue. Oh, what time is it? It's almost two. Psychologist, busy person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you need to. We'll need to continue. We'll need to continue with that cross examination. Do you know where you left off? Yes. Okay. So make make a note of where you left off. Unfortunately, she has to go to the other class. Um, let's go ahead and break here. Let's go ahead and break here until Monday. Let's go ahead and break here until Monday. You guys can go ahead and use the rest of the class time as planning time to get ready for Monday. Um, and then we'll try and get both, we'll try and get all of your witnesses finished up on Monday Bye, and we'll get judges. to work on it as soon as we get judges. in. Okay? I we'll get started she's as soon as we get in. Okay? We're not judges. Are we good she's to go? She's being polite. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, court is now dismissed until Monday. Recess. 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 <laughs> not dismissed. Thank you. Recess until Monday. Um, and we will pick up at Monday with this witness. <laughs>
What is it Okay.